Hey everybody, welcome to the show, Board Game Reviews. This week we're going to do something a little bit different, something to throw out there while I've been working on Don the Zeds. Because while I was working on Don the Zeds, a package showed up on the door and I thought this is something that somebody, well, some of you might out there might be interested in. Because as some of you may know, if you're fans of Flying Frog Productions, Shadows of Brimstone came out with a second edition. And the cool folks over at Flying Frog Productions actually brought out a, an expansion pack that allows you to buy everything that kind of helps you bring the game up to, let's call it the second edition. I don't want to use the term second edition because it's not really a second edition. Basically, they brought out a new edition of the game that has a whole bunch of rata, a whole bunch of stuff fixed in it. And I don't know if you are like me, but my biggest question is, do I want to buy everything for the game all over again, Shadows of Brimstone, because everything is $120 and I'd be basically buying the game all over again to get all the miniatures, all the cardstock, all the boards and everything all over again. Well, a lot of this stuff is stuff I really don't need. So I bought the $30 upgrade kit and I thought some of you might be interested in knowing if is it worth it buying just a $30 update credit or should you spend all the money and go for the full $120 to buy the game all over again? We'll come back after the break because we're going to open this package compared to the old stuff. And this may be a little, rough, a little rough with a couple rough edits because I haven't opened this stuff yet. I don't know what's going to be on the inside. So I want to compare it to the old stuff and let you know if it's worth buying just this upgrade kit or maybe you should just go through and buy the whole darn package all over again right after the break. So if you're watching this video, I kind of assume you know what Shadows of Brimstone is, but just for anybody who has no idea what the game is, the game is basically a dungeon crawler with a Wild West mixed in with a Stranger Cthulhu type of fiction, mixed in to create a game where you're basically playing some heroes, you're leveling up, going through a kind of a campaign system, and having a lot of adventures, and adventure goals level up your character. There's lots of different worlds to explore, lots of different expansions, as you can see from all the cards here, and there's lots of stuff for the game. Again, if you don't know what Shadows of Brimstone is, this is not the video for you. This is 100% going to look at the upgrade kit and see if this is something worth spending the extra $30 on. Or like I said, if you just want to go for broke and spend the full 120 and buy the entire game all over again. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at some of the cards. And again, expect some weird edits here because I'm not going to make you all sit still while I dig through these entire stacks of cards. Finding all this stuff, basically I'm going to pull out these cards, go through them, cut and edit this up and put it together for you. So this can give you the idea if you want to spend the money, buy all this stuff for $30. And again, this is a very limited edition. If you go to Flying Frog Productions website, they specifically say that they're only going to offer this for a limited time. And it makes sense to me. I get what they're doing and I don't blame them at all. Look at this. See if this is worth buying for $30 or if you just want to go all over again and spend the full 120 times two to buy both the base box sets all over again. $30 versus, versus $240. You need to make the decision. I'm not going to compare the models because I'm just going with the upgrade kit. So let's go ahead and look at everything. So first up, let's go ahead and look at the cards. We have the cards for the Preacher and it looks like there is only going to be the upgraded cards that happen to be changed. I'm just going through these very, very quickly and it does absolutely nothing for you. Doesn't that make for a great video? So if we go through these, we can see how many cards they've actually upgraded. So there's one Preacher card that has been upgraded. Then we are going to get, let's see, three Rancher cards. We're going to get two Lawman cards. We are going to get three Gunslingers and three Bandito cards. Let's see, three Saloon Girls and three U.S. Marshals. And the rest of it, we'll look at the Shermans and stuff like that. So it looks like they're not reprinting all the cards, which is basically what we knew. They said they were only going to reprint the cards that really, really mattered. So let's go ahead and look at these cards, see if it matters what they actually are including. So this may be a little bit slow. And again, look for weird edits because I'm going to have to go through and make this not boring for all of you to watch. But I'm going to have to go through and find these cards specifically. Then we're going to go ahead and match them up and see what has changed on some of these cards. And the trick is I need to go through and find out which cards are going to be matching with the campaign I'm playing. And they have to put them all back because I'm not going to ruin the campaign I'm in the middle of. So first thing we're looking at is we're looking at the Redemptionist card for the Preacher, which I don't believe. Yeah, actually I do have on this character. So this is actually an easy one. I can stick this one right back in when we're done. So let's go and make some space here and let's go ahead and zoom in with the overhead camera and see what we can find is going to be different. 
Now, the nice thing here is when it comes to these cards, they do have symbols on them now, which allows you to know which are the new cards and which are the old cards because they're putting symbols on the set so you know exactly what set that specific card comes from. So we see that right here that we have the Redemptionist card and we can see exactly what has changed between these cards. It says, so the extra starting gear used to be a shotgun. Now it's going to be the Redemptionist shotgun, which is replaces the holy book itself. So we know that we are getting a brand new card. So now I need to, well, we need to compare the shotgun and we need to compare it with the Redemptor shotgun to see exactly what they're doing because the whole idea was to rebalance this and make sure all of these heroes are a little bit better balanced. There we go, Redemption shotgun. That's an easy one. So if we go ahead and look at the differences here, we see the shotgun versus Redemption shotgun. It looks like the Redemptioners or Redemptionist shotgun is going to give plus one faith to the preacher, which is good because that's one of the main reasons why people play the preacher, but don't go for Redemptionist because you don't have enough faith to actually cast your spells, which is basically what you are. You're basically a spellcaster. So they added so you get plus one faith. That's definitely cool. They lower the range from down from five all the way down to three. It still does only one shot, which is cool, but now we see that this one's going to roll 2d6 for the damage versus the regular mount, and it's still going to be two-handed. So it looks like it actually bump, buffed up the Redemptions just a little bit, and makes it more of something that you may want to choose when you play the Preacher. So again, that's kind of the cool thing that Flying Frogs was trying to do with this whole update to the system. They're trying to make it so there is enough reasons to play some of the other classes or some of the other skill trees because some of the skill trees, were, they just weren't that good. You basically knew that if you played a certain character, you're going to play in the same way every single time because the other skill trees just weren't worth it. So they went through and they went and rebalanced it. So this is cool. That's a nice change. It actually looks like this could be a good path to go down and I actually want to play this now going down that path. That looks a lot better as Redemptions versus the old way of doing it. So let's go ahead and move that off to the side and see what we have next. Next up, we have the sermons for the preacher. Now, I don't want to go through all these because that's just going to bore all of you to death, but I just want to look at some of the differences they have and show you that they actually have some different wording. A little bit of different on the symbology. Same symbols, but they move the symbols around just a little bit. And some changes that you can actually see might be buffs, might be a little bit of, you know, weakenings of the class. So let's go ahead and look at those. And I'll go ahead and put those just like this so it's a little bit more obvious what the changes are over here we have the old and over here we have the new so let's go ahead and look at revitalize here just for a start we see that some of the verbiage used for this casting ability has actually been changed a little bit but you see that they've actually kept everything else the same the only thing they moved is they moved the symbol for the corruption just so you made it a little more obvious to see it we see that the, uh, this will cause you corruption if you got a spell and the old corruption symbol is right there but the rest of this ability is pretty much similar the example is pretty close it just clarifies specifically more with the verbiage so that's not too bad but when you look at some of the other ones here, such as Smite, we see that Smite actually has a lot of changes to it. We've gone from a range of 12 all the way down to a range of 10. We see that the experience has changed just a little bit, but we also see that the amount of damage it does has been leveled out just a little bit. So instead of having a range of anywhere from one to eight points of damage, we're gonna use a Peril Die. We all know the Peril Die is not a true D6. It has a more rounded amount of damage to it. So it kind of balances out the amount of damage it did. So it looks like when they went through with the Preacher here, they tried to make it so the Preacher was a little bit more of a stable character, so you're not being more of a risk taker. You're not buying abilities that are either going to be really, really good or really, really bad, depending on the luck of the dice. It kind of balances it out so it feels like less of a luck fest and more of some really good decisions because a lot of times you're not going to pick a power which can be really, really random. You want the powers to be as reliable as possible, so powers are more reliable and you pick more. So it looks like they made some conscious decisions here in an effort to make it so they have abilities that you're going to pick that are much more reliable or at least much more stable while keep, still keeping in the spirit of the game. So we're going to look at intervention. We can see that intervention has not changed too drastically, but we do see that it's gotten much more specific with the verbiage. It's still a 10 plus to cast it. It still is going to do a corruption and when we cast this ability, if we have a failure roll, we're going to see that the experience has changed for it, which is a big complaint about the Preacher because the Preacher is one of the characters in this game that can level up extremely easily. Because basically anytime you're healing another hero, you're gaining experience. So they can gain a lot of experience easily, especially when you're getting lots of experience just for casting spells. So it looks like they brought, they brought the Preacher also in line with his leveling up, which is also a good decision. I do support that because it kind of bounces things out a little bit. So the initial casting of these spells has gone down a little bit. The rule verbiage has been cleared up a little bit, and they've also balanced out the amount of damage they do. We'll just go through these very quickly. You see some very minor changes, not too bad, but there have been some changes. But the important stuff has basically remained the same. 
except for some minor changes to make it a little more average, a little more balanced, and make it feel like it's less random when it comes to the damage, and much more out of whack when it comes to gaining experience for these hero, this hero. A little bit more balanced, a little bit better, and these are some changes that I support and I think are some really good decisions from Flying Frog. Next up, let's look at the Lawman. So the Lawman has had a few changes to some skills that we actually never picked when we played this game. So these are actually very cool. Keeping up with the, what I've been saying earlier, some balancing techniques to make it so people are picking some of the skills that normally people don't pick that often. So we see that strong leadership has changed in a very, very positive way. Now when we play this game, nobody ever picks strong leadership because it costs a grit to use. And I can tell you in this game, grit is an extremely powerful resource. You don't want to be using grit for lame, horrible things because grit can do so many darn really good things. Basically, grit can save your bacon and allow you to do a complete reroll of anything. So spending grit for something like this may not seem as powerful, especially when we have an update here that says whenever the posse marker moves, then you can just heal one wound or sandy without having to worry about spending any of your grit. That's definitely an awesome change. That's something that I think I'm actually going to start picking with my groups, especially when somebody plays Lawman. That's much, much better. Even though it's a little heal, it's not costing you grit, which is a very, very scarce resource that you definitely want to have around as much as possible. Next up, we're going to have his Iron Wheel, which is, again, is going to be burning grit. So we're still burning grit for this one, but not only are we gaining experience every time we use this ability, this ability actually works even better. Right now, it's up to a 3 plus before it was a 4 plus on the roll. And it's also very much more specific on the verbiage here, saying that you can use it only at one specific time, not at any time, which causes a little bit of confusion. So that's a, definitely a good change. And I don't know if I would use Iron Will, because again, I think Grit is very good, but that's gonna make me lean towards one use of this ability even more, because the ability to cancel darkness cards can be very powerful, because these darkness cards, as we all know, can be extremely nasty. And sometimes they're gonna come up and you look at your hero posse and go, no, that's the worst darkness card that can come out. So having this ability to cancel those darkness cards could be really powerful, especially since it works even better and we're gonna gain some experience just for doing it. Next up, looking at the US Marshal, we see that the US Marshal actually had one card that just clarified things a little bit, didn't really change the card at all. There's being more specific saying it's a four plus versus saying four, five, six, so no real big change there. But we do see the two other abilities for the US Marshal have actually changed, and one A be a sideways change, another one's actually a really good positive change. Let's go and look at clean up the Old West. Card is pretty much the same, except for the fact that now when you take this, you get plus one max grit. That's always an awesome thing. Having more max grit is a great thing in this game. But the other thing we have here is the, re the Harden Resolve ability. We see that we have actually lost the plus two Sandy on this ability, but now we see that when we use the one grit to heal, instead of healing three, we're now healing four. So we've lost a little bit of Sandy, but we've made this a much more powerful heal. So is that worth it? I don't know, it's kind of a sideways thing. It might be a good thing depending on the party you've laid up. It may not be a good thing depending if you have a party that does need the extra sandy. Who knows, but that's definitely one change. And we also see the other thing that's really, really important here, though, is that anytime you use a tonic side token, you're getting extra grit. So that right there makes me think this is actually a great upgrade. Losing a sandy, not a big deal, but gaining extra grit when you use those tonics, I think is really cool, especially when you get a better heal. Next up we have is the Rancher. Now the Rancher with the Farmstead Defender, the ability didn't change at all. As a matter of fact, it says the exact same things in both the cards, but you get an extra card. Why they did that, I'm not sure. Maybe it's because they were worried about the backs of the cards not matching because we all know how some of us get really upset when our card backs don't match. Wouldn't be a big deal to me because these aren't cards you shuffle, but they send extra cards anyway. So just going to put those off to the side. But the two abilities we see have actually changed quite a bit. We see that Home Remedies actually has two very important changes. One, you no longer get experience from using it on another hero. And the second thing is you can now use this on any hero on the entire tile that you happen to be on. It's no longer an adjacent thing. It's now any hero on your same tile, which is actually really darn cool. That makes us so much more powerful being able to heal any hero anywhere on the same tile as you is actually very darn cool. We also see that we start every adventure with one extra grit than normal. That's awesome. This power is really darn cool. And we can actually have a really solid party without having to have a healer along because the rancher can actually be a nice backup healer or when you get to the higher levels, it can still be a really nice backup healer to a preacher or something else. Next thing we're gonna see is the swing rifle it has actually changed and this is actually one really important change. Originally for the swing rifle, you spend a grit and you can use it. Now you can only use it once per fight. Still costs you a grit, but now you can only use it once per fight. But instead of doing one automatic hit, we're gonna see that we're gonna roll two free combat hits. So that's a little bit of a change also. Depending on your luck, that could be more powerful, but the change of only using it once per fight is definitely a very strong change. Next up, we have the Gunslinger. Now, the Gunslinger has three abilities. You actually got all three of the cards for the Gunslinger. And two of the three abilities didn't change, which I find very weird because I only got one replacement Preacher card, 
But I'm getting three Gunslinger cards, even though only one Gunslinger ability changed, which seemed kind of weird to me, but oh well, that's just what happens to come in the upgrade pack. But the only ability that really changes is one we've known about for a long, long time. This has been available in the FAQ. It basically cleaned up the Burbridge for a quick draw. It now makes it so you have plus 10 to initial on the first round. Not a big deal, not much of a change there at all. The other two cards stayed pretty much exactly the same. They changed the wording for us for clarity. Other than that, no changes at all when it comes to the Gunslinger. Pretty much an easy change. Next up is going to be the Bandito. Now the Bandito, let's go ahead and look at what changes happened for the Bandito. Now the Bandito, like the Lawman, not too many changes, but the important thing to hear or to see right here for the Bandito was the exchange or the change in the Explosive Expert. Now with Explosive Expert, we still have the ability to use two grit to gain a dynamite token, but we now see that once per adventure, we can make a throw dynamite as a free attack. So that is actually a mild, mild little change, which is actually pretty darn cool. Is it going to change how I'm going to level up the Bandito? Probably not, because most times when we play the Bandito, we go for dynamite anyways, because dynamite's so darn cool in the game. Dangerous, but cool. But anyways, it's one of those things that we pick a lot, so getting one free attack, just in a way, kind of makes Bandito just a little bit cooler, gives them a little bit extra special power. At least in our, our group, that didn't make much of a difference because we don't go for the dual pistols too often. We usually go for the extra dynamite here, but for any of you who are still on the fence of which way to go, that's actually a really cool thing to think about, is one free attack once per adventure can be really darn powerful. Next up, we have the Saloon Girl. Now, the Saloon Girl, again, not too many changes. One of the big things is going to be for the Knockout Punch. The other ability is just got to clean up a little bit, except for Acrobatic Dodge. Acrobatic Dodge is now actually specifies that you automatically succeed in any escape test, which the original card never specified, but most people kind of assumed anyways, because, you know, the ability to move things through things kind of gave you the idea that that would happen. Maybe we were right, maybe we were wrong, but that's how most people played anyways. So the other thing is Dirty Fighting, which didn't really change at all, but the other thing that did change in a really cool way is going to be Knockout Punch. Knockout Punch got a really nice buff to it, which I really like. If you spend a grit before, once you spend the grit, it's gone. But now when you spend the grit, there's a chance that you can get that grit right on back if you manage to kill the target and you roll a four or higher. So basically that's saying if you kill something, you have a 50-50 shot of getting the grit back. That's really cool. That's a nice bonus to the knockout punch. And that's another reason why you may want to pick out knockout punch for the saloon girl versus in the past where everybody seemed to pick the ability to move through enemies because that kind of seemed like the no-brainer decision. That's kind of different now because now you can do some extra damage and possibly get some grit back. Very cool change. Next up, we have a couple Growing Darkness cards that changed. One of them actually became much more deadly. Two of them just got modified just a little bit. First one is Suffocating Mist. Suffocating Mist now specifically clarifies that the damage is poison damage. That can be very important in case you have any abilities to avoid poison damage. And then the other thing was Encroaching Shadow. Just clarify the verbiage just a little bit on how you can, or you're going to change back the holding of the dark back the darkness roll. But the big change is going to be Caven. Caven got a heck of a lot deadlier, specifically twice as deadly, because before it just did D6 hits. Now it does D6 hits, and each hit does two wounds specifically. So this card can now do up to 12 points of damage, where before it can only do six. A lot more deadly and a lot more entertaining. Well, entertaining for the bad guys at least. Next up, we have Hideous Discovery, which is a scavenge card. We have two copies of it, and it really didn't change that much. All I did was just simply fix the verbiage on a little bit to be a little more specific of specifying damage versus losing, which is one of the original problems I had with the original Shouts of Brimstone. They were kind of interchanging the terms losing and damage, so this basically just clarifies a little bit. Not a big deal, not really a card that needed to be replaced, but again, it's replaced, so let's just add that in on the pile of corrections. Next up, we have three new loot cards. Not a big deal. They went from 20 experience to 30 experience. Not much else to say, just a little bit of change. Again, this is one of those cards that's kind of cool. They added in, but not really that big of a change at all. No clarifications, really just extra experience. That's it. Next up we have is Growing Dread, the one most hated card in the entire Growing Dread deck. Just had a little bit of clarification. This is the one that when you fail your roll, you permanently lose Sandy. This is the one that we all save grit for the final encounter for because when this card comes out, we hate it. So the only thing I did was just clarify the loss of the Sandy, and it's really not even clarified that much. It was pretty much understandable, at least for me in the original card, but they made it a little bit more specific, saying that you don't take damage, you are actually losing that Sandy permanently, and that's how you're going to take the damage right then and there. A little bit of clarification, not a big deal. I still want to burn this card in an open flame, but instead I just make sure everybody saves at least one point of grit, because when it comes out, I hate this card. But hey, it's part of the fun of the game. 
Next up we have is a clarification to a world card. That is going to be the Targa Plateau and it's actually a very good clarification. One I did not know so I don't know if this is an errata or something I just missed. But the first thing is a little bit more specific about the damage. But the second most important thing is actually gaining the grit. It actually clarifies any kind of hero that gains grit on a roll of one or two is actually going to get two grit now versus the old way it was is you just got grit on a two. So it kind of less weakens a character who was already you know getting grit for a one or two and prevents the Targa Plateau from being extra vicious just that specific hero so that's kind of a cool that's a positive change so another one of those cards that it's really good to include us in this errata pack next up we have some extra cards for the thread deck now some of these cards i get and i understand why they made these differences some i don't get so i'll just go in and comment those really quick the first ones we have is we are going to change the one that says one slasher and two peril dice worth of undead and a corpse pile is going to change to the exact same thing except we've removed the artwork for the corpse pile. Why I did that, I don't know, but apparently I did. So that's the big change with that with the red high level threats there. Again, don't know why that made a difference. Maybe somebody can explain it to you, maybe it's some kind of confusion. I don't know on that one. Next one we're going to see, this one kind of does make sense to me. We used to have it so that we had a green threat card that was one slasher and peril dice worth of bat, hell bats. And there was also a yellow card, which was a medium peril, which was the exact same thing. So that medium peril has been replaced with this one, which is one slasher and six hellbats. So that change makes sense. I understand why they did the one because, hey, it became more of a greater challenge. The next one I don't really get, and I'm trying to figure this one out, is we have 600 get Hungry Dead. This is a low threat encounter. There is no exact thing in the threat deck that I can see that this can possibly replace. The closest thing I see is the peril die worth of hunger dead and the corpse pile, but you get three of these and we get two replacement cards. So I'm assuming we're just adding these cards to the threat deck because they realize that there is nothing to match the six spiders. I don't know, I'm kind of assuming, so I'm just going to add these cards in. Again, I don't have factual evidence on that one, but I think that's what they did there. Not quite sure because there's no other thing that matches right there quite right. Next up are some new cards for some various different locations. I'm not going to go through every single one of these because there's actually a decent amount of these and I don't want to make this video go for, I don't know, like five hours. But we're going to get nine new mine artifact cards, 15 new mine encounter cards, and we're going to get 15 new gear replacement cards, and plus some of the hint cards are going to be modified. And basically, it's going to be a little bit of clarification. There's actually a couple rules, but most of these rules have been appearing in the FAQ. So we've been keeping up with the FAQ. None of these changes should make any big uh, should catch any of you off guard. I didn't catch anyone. I just went through these very quickly. But as far as I can tell, no real changes that weren't in the FAQs, at least nothing that's going off the top of my head, or at least nothing that's really triggering any memory. So basically 9, 15, 15, and some quick little updates, stuff we've already seen on the FAQs. And now we get to the big stuff, and let's go ahead and cover this stuff really, really quickly. Again, we have a lot of stuff here, and I don't know if everything has changed or if some of these are just quick little replacements and updates. But I'm going to cover these really quickly. First thing we are going to have is some new tokens. I think these are the tokens for the alt genders, and I'm pretty sure that's all they are, is just the alt gender tokens, so which is very cool. We got a couple new tokens, some things that are coming from some quests. We got the Hellfire. We actually got some Darkstone Shivs, which is good. I'm glad they finally added the Darkstone Shivs. They should have had tokens for these a long, long time ago. It makes it so much easier to track these. We have, a, it looks like, some clarifications on some of the Preacher's abilities. I'm going to have to look at these specifically. But I think these are for the Shermans for the Preacher that's going to modify those. Again, just cleans up the language just a little bit. And it looks like we have some more cards here. Okay, so it would have been helpful if I would have pulled these out sooner because that would have made this all make a lot more sense. But hey, hindsight's 2020. I don't normally do unboxing videos because I'm not good at them. But hey, there's only one way to get better, right? So we will have, let's see here, we have one, two, three, four new Otherworld Threat cards. And I'm going to assume these just clean up maybe how they go through. I'll go through these really quick and see if there's anything major changes for these. We have three major target artifact cards that are going to be updated. I do believe that most of these have been FAQ'd, especially for the Plasmark. I do believe that one was on the FAQ. Not too sure about the other ones here. We have five new encounter updates. We have some Swamps cards that are going to be modified update. Looks like it's just a half dozen here. A couple more cards and a couple encounters and it looks like some purse items are going to be updated. The Hand Mirror and the Lucky Charm. I'm actually going to go ahead and pull these out really quick and see if there's been any major changes on these because these are some good ones to check out on for your heroes and see if there's any changes to the gear for your heroes. 
And it looks like these two cars are just minor, extremely minor clarifications. Lucky Charm has gone from once per adventure to prevent all damage done, or I'm sorry, now, so, uh, let me try this all over again. Lucky Charm has gone from once per adventure, ignore all damage, to once per adventure, prevent all damage. So it's a little bit of clarification on the words they use. Not a big deal. And the hand mirror is pretty much the same thing. It used to say voice in the dark, now only does D3 hits to you instead of D6. Now it says specifically does horror hits. So again, not that big of a difference. Just a little bit of a clarification on those cards. And again, that seems what a lot of these cards are, just a little bit of clarifications. And most of these, I think we've seen on the FAQs. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure almost all these are from the FAQ. I'll go through these cards, just make sure later. If there's any big changes, we'll notify. I'll just add some comments to the video, because again, this is starting to go very, very long, which is something I did not want to do. So let's go ahead and look at some of the monster cards and also see if some of the hero cards have changed at all, or if I can glance any big changes really, really quickly here. The big thing was the cards for me because those are the ones that make some of the hugest difference and it's hard to fix cards that are broken. These cards right here, not a big deal for me because we know that most of us use character sheets for our heroes anyway, so not too critical for these to be changed that you can always write on these. And again, like I said, most of us use the character sheets, so not a big deal at all. It looks like we have cards for the Sloon Girl, the Rancher, and the Preacher. We have Goliath, Night Terrors, Stranglers. Void Spiders, Tentacles, Targa Pylons, the Harming, Harbinger, the Slashers, the Hellbats, the Hungry Dead, and the Corpse Pile. So it looks like lots of bad guys got updated, but not too many heroes got updated. Let me go and grab some of these bad guys. Let's go and see if we have any major changes to compare really, really quick here. And let's just lay these out for you super duper quickly without causing too many delays. Let's go ahead and zoom in and see what we see that looks really, really different here. Okay. Old on the left, new on the right. Just glancing really quickly, it looks like initiative is still the same, still saying extra large. Looks like unspeakable terror is three. Oh, looks like they fit clean some of the verbiage uh, used there. Flying technicals, they clarify with a three now, so not too big of a difference. Tough looks like it's pretty much the same. Stats stayed, oh, looks like combat got clarified. Damage is the same, defense is the same. Looks like their hit points went up, still amount of experience. And it looks like things are, well, it looks like some minor changes for the Elite chart, too. So it looks like there are some actual changes right there. So that is going to be good. And I did that completely backwards. Wow, I just broke what I was doing before. So this is old and this is new. So let's go ahead and change that completely. Wow, this is going to look pretty darn silly. So it looks like the Goliath has actually been made weaker. So let's change that up. They clarified the combat for the, the Goliath and they also clarified the flailing tentacles. So it used to say, roll three combat attacks against every hero within three spaces. Now it says, use its full combat to attack every hero within three spaces. So just a slight clarification right there. So the big, big thing here is, it looks like it lost some hit points, but we see right here, it's gonna get plus four hit points per hero. So it looks like instead of weakening it, it's actually going to be a little bit tougher especially if we have a lot of heroes on the board. So that's actually pretty darn cool. Again, it looks like we're gonna clarify things right here. So basically it just looks like a little bit of clarification. So that's the change on that one. Let's go ahead and look at another one, see if we have any major changes. So let's go ahead and get rid of the Goliath. And let's look for the next one, which is going to be the Night Terrors. Let's see if we have any big changes here. Actually, there's the Heartbringer. I'll leave that one out because we're going to look at that one pretty darn quickly. I'm sure there's going to be some pretty interesting changes on that one. But Night Terrors. There's the old Night Terror versus the new Night Terror. So old on the left, new on the right. Still size large, still same. Initiative looks like it's still Terror 2. Looks like its range is the same. Still 5 melee, 4-4, four, four, 3 defense. 12 health looks like the experience is the same. So what the heck changed right here? Let's go ahead and make this unfun for all of you. I'm going to go ahead and flip this over and see exactly what changed between these two cards here. So move the same, escape as it came. Ah, I see exactly what they did. Looks like they clarified the elite chart. Looks like the elite chart had some interesting wording on it. Looks like they modified and made it make much, much more sense and actually made it a little more tougher because it looks like the escape is 5 plus or actually weaker because escape is 5 plus versus 6 plus. So that's pretty darn good. So it looks like they went through with the monsters and just cleaned up a couple of them. I'm going to go ahead and look at one more here really, really quickly, which is Harbinger. See if there's any major changes on him. And it looks like we can already see the elite power has been cleaned up a little bit. Still extra large, still four initiative. Looks like it's still unspeakable. Terror is three. Looks like 
the bringer of death is looks like it's still well, actually it's um roll a d6 on the following chart roll a d6 uh, maybe some change i'll go over those later i can already see right now that it's going to be a peril die so that's going to change that a little bit looks like flight moves through other models and charges or i'm sorry and changes targets each turn that's the same tough immune to critical hits immune to critical hits so not big change there so formulae still three combat still four damage defense is still three but it looks like just like the same for the goliath what they did is they made it so it's hit points based on the amount of heroes so instead of having a lot of heroes making these final bosses a lot easier it's going to balance out based on the amount of heroes so that's actually a pretty cool change so i actually like that so it looks like that's what they went through and did a lot of balancing for all these bad guys let's go ahead and look at some of the changes for the heroes so there's three hero replacement cards. We have the Preacher, we have the Saloon Girl, and then we are going to have the Rancher, which is going to be replaced. And I'm just going to cover two of the three really quick because I don't want to waste time again to make this video way too darn long. But look at the Saloon Girl first. We can see the old one again on the, your left and the new one on my on your right. We're going to see that Comforting and Presence was clarified just a little bit, but the big thing here is we're going to see that we no longer get five experience points for every wound or sanity healed. Now, I don't know if there's going to be a change in the actual rules for the game. It's going to be clarified, or they're just preventing people from getting double experience or what, but I need to see the rule book, the new rule book PDF, and I haven't had a chance to do that. But this is just a clarification. Not a big deal, but if it's actually a change, that's going to change how some of the healing classes gain experience. And it's also going to stop them from being kind of runaways when it comes to healing, because it was very easy for the healer classes to level up extremely easy in this game, especially if you're with a party that takes a lot of damage. Just keep on healing, keep on leveling, and eventually you're going to outheal the rest of the party. So not that big of a deal, just a little bit of a change there. The other change I noticed, and I don't know about this one. I'm just going to leave it at I don't know about this one. It actually took me a while to figure out exactly what the heck the change was. So the change on the preacher between the old preacher and the new preacher this is the only change, unless I'm totally missing this, because I spent 10 minutes thinking, am I losing my mind or what? But we have gone from a holy man to a holy order, and we've gone from a holy woman to a holy order. I don't know why that was worth a card. I don't get it. I don't know if there's some kind of complaint. I'm just going to walk away from that one because I don't get that one at all. But that's the change. You don't need a replacement card because... All the abilities are still the same. I'm just going to move on from there and let's go ahead and look at the locations. And finally, let's just go ahead and go over some of the locations very, very quickly and see if we can just eyeball some major changes, see if anything really drastic has changed. I'm assuming, uh, looking from this right now, oh my gosh, tape is fighting me every step of the way. Tape is horrible. Evil, horrible tape. Anyways, I'm assuming what's going to happen since it looks like we have all the locations here, unless I'm losing my mind is that there's just gonna be some minor clarifications on some of these cards so let's just go ahead and see if we can compare one of them just go over them very very quickly so let's just go ahead and go over the saloon we'll just cover these very quickly we see assassination attempt looks like the words are about the same just looking at this quickly next thing we have is you're cheating us and it looks like line for line it looks like it's going to be pretty much the same make a kind of six yep looks the same Spill drink looks like it's going to be pretty much the same. Same amount of damage, same amount of money lost. Next thing is going to be a bar fight. It looks like it's make five strength. Five strength still the same. Actually, it looks like they clarified some of the words here. It specifies now that you're going to take the damage. It doesn't matter if you happen to have any defense. It's going to ignore defense. You're actually going to take the damage. So that's actually be an interesting change. It says right here specifically, ignoring any defense, which the old one didn't say. So let's just go down and see if we have any other changes. No change, no change, and no change there. No change, and I'm reading this upside down. So if you read faster than me, you just let me know in the comments down below. Looks like no change there, no change there, and it uh, looks like no change there. So let's go ahead and flip it over. And I'm just going to eyeball this very, very quickly. It looks like prices, 1200 looks like prices are about the same. Darkstone, let's see, entertain, pickpocket, looks like it's about the same. Still take D3 corruption hits, D3 corruption hits, 100. Okay, looks like the price for perfume went down, so that's a good one to see for the saloon girl hero only. It still looks like cask 300. Oh, actually it looks like it's going to clarify performer heroes only because before it said saloon girl, so it looks like performer, so that's just a little clarification. Still 50, still 300, still 1,000, 850, 50, 150, so not too many changes. And just eyeballing, it looks like there's not a lot of changes. It looks like this clarified right there. Maybe one price change, so it looks like a little bit of difference there. So it is kind of cool that we have all these different locations. It looks like they're going to clarify some of them. 
I'll go through and see if I see any other major differences. I'm not gonna waste your time going line by line for all these locations because I'm sure it's gonna be a snooze fest for every single one of you and that's the last thing I want any of my videos to be is a snooze fest. So this is just a quick overview of what comes with a $30 upgrade kit for Shadows of Brimstone. Basically, I wanna just let you know, just by looking at this, if you need to decide if you're just gonna spend a $30 for the upgrade kit or if you just wanna go all the way back in and spend the $240 to rebuy the entire base system all over again. Because basically what this is doing is fixing all the major errata and corrections between the two base sets. Now the original base sets were $100 a piece. I know you can go to Amazon and various different shops and get a discount up to 20%. That's not the point here, just try and make this easy. The original sets were $100 a piece. So if you had both base boxes, you have about $200 invested in the game. Now, if you want to replace those and go ahead and buy the boxes all over again, they're now up to $120 a piece. So you're spending $240. So you're basically $440 into the hole. So you need to decide if it's worth it to spend that or just spend the $30 for the upgrade kit. I'm happy spending $30 for the upgrade kit. It looks like there's some good clarifications, there are some good changes, and actually some of these changes are ones that I can actually appreciate. I think the $30 is actually a really good price point, a really good value, and what you're getting out of this is pretty darn good. The upgrading the cards where it needs to be, it looks like there's some clarifications that are very, very important, but it does look like they went overboard with it. The, everything corrected and fixed. There's a few things I'm kind of puzzled on. Why they replaced three cards for a lot of the classes, especially when they didn't change, but some of the classes they didn't, like the Preacher, unless I was missing some cards in the upgrade pack. I hope that's not the case, but looks like we're gonna get some good things with some replacement tokens. And again, these locations, I'll go over off the camera and make sure there's no major changes. Hope you enjoyed this video. This was just a quick shout out towards Fancy Frog Productions. I'm sorry, Fantasy Frog, wow, that was a bad one. How about Flying Frog Productions? This was a quick shout out for them. Basically for me saying thanks Flying Frog for taking the good tact and bringing out an upgrade kit, which prevents most of us having to go out there and repurchase a game that we've been playing for a long time, enjoying quite a bit. I hope more companies do this, and I hope you enjoy this video. If you have any comments or questions, make sure you leave them down in the YouTube comments down below. I'll be sure to get to them as quickly as I can. You can also feel free to email me at off the shelf board game reviews. That's O-T-S-B-G-R at gmail.com. Be sure to reply to your emails as quickly as I can. If you enjoy this video and enjoy this content, Think about supporting this channel on Patreon, patreon.com slash OTSBGR. This channel is 100% sponsor free, which means everything I do with this channel comes out of my own personal pocket. Your dollar in the tip jar can help keep the lights on and help me cover my costs. If you enjoy this video, if you enjoy this channel, click that like button, click that subscribe button. As always, thanks for watching.